Dr. Clarence Walton Lilyhigh was a cardiac surgeon who on March 26, 1954, led an open heart operation at the University of Minnesota. With Dr. Lilyhigh's leadership in producing and using cross circulation for the first time, the surgery was successful and paved the way for open heart operations today. Born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, 1918, Clarence Walton Lilyhigh foreshadowed being a surgeon already at a young age. He graduated from the University of Minnesota in 1939, then went to medical school, and after earning five degrees under the direction of Dr. Owen Wangenstein, became a Department of Surgery professor. During World War II, he was in the Army Medical Corps, and eventually he rose to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel and earned a Bronze Star. In 1949, Dr. Lilyhigh became a full-time instructor of surgery at the University of Minnesota Medical School. Unfortunately, he was diagnosed with lymphosarcoma of the parotid gland, which gave him a 5-10% to 10 chance of surviving for the next five years. After undergoing head and neck surgery, which Dr. Wangenstein had took part in, he healed completely, but his neck remained somewhat disfigured for the rest of his life. Prior to Lily High's development of cross-circulation, Dr. John Gibbon, a doctor in Philadelphia, successfully closed an atrial septal defect using a complex screen oxygenator and roller pumps. However, the fatality of open heart surgery remained prominent, mainly because of oxygenator-related problems. Because of these complications, the method was discontinued. Many doctors discouraged over the thought of open heart surgery. This made Dr. Lilyhigh's breakthrough of cross-circulation even more significant. In the past 15 years, tremendous advances have been made in, intracardi in cardiac surgery. However, there's remained one barrier, which is been most frustrating to those surgeons interested in this aspect of surgical treatment, and that was our inability to work within the heart in a relatively leisurely fashion with the heart open and free of blood, and thus correct certain car intracardiac lesions which at the present time were hopeless or at best subject only to a palliative operations. Those of us here have been dedicated to the principle that there must be somehow a simple method for accomplishing this intracardiac surgery under direct vision. Progress really began to be made in this field about two years ago here when Dr. Morley Cohen on my left and Dr. Herbert Warden began to work full time in the laboratory upon this problem. The final form is Dr. Cohen's suggestion and I'll ask him to describe it. Lily High participated in the world's first successful open heart operation, not using cross circulation, but using hypothermia, which was unreliable because it gave them only a 10 minute window to perform the surgery and was not suited for most birth defects within the heart. This happened at the University of Minnesota on September 2, 1952. The operation was led by Lily High's longtime friend and colleague, Dr. Floyd John Lewis who had also made many other major medical and diagnostic contributions. He first used cross-circulation for open heart surgery on March 26, 1954, when Dr. Lily High and his colleagues Morley Cohen, Herb Warden, and Richard Varco used cross-circulation to repair a large ventricular defect in a 13-month-old boy named Gregory Glidden. Before the surgery, Dr. Lily High checked all the equipment that would be needed to perform cross-circulation in the surgery. He also confirmed that two teams of anesthesiologists were set. Then they brought in the patient. The surgery started by splitting the sternum to gain access to his heart. With his hand, he could feel an abnormal vibration, yet everything appeared normal. Then they brought in his father to serve as an oxygenator, which worked by routing blood flow from the patient's cable system to a spemoral vein and lungs, who was oxygenated and then returned to Gregory's carotid artery. Once they were sure the cross circulation was running smoothly, they made a small incision into his heart. Without proper equipment, he had to use a light called an otoscope, which was usually used to look inside ears. Even with this, he found the defect rather easily. It was a hole about the size of a dime known as a VSD. Lily High quickly and precisely put in 12 stitches closing the hole. At that point, everything looked good and the tremor he had felt before was gone. He observed the heart for a few minutes afterward to be sure, and the operation was complete. It took a total of 19 minutes. Post-surgery, Gregory was assigned a private nurse to keep watch over him, and for the first day, everything remained stable. Then, on April 3rd, he started having breathing problems and started to suffocate. Lily High knew the only solution was to perform an emergency tracheotomy. 
Two hours later, Gregory's breathing was better and he was stable once again. Over the next few days, Gregory's breathing only got worse and sadly, on April 6th at 9.15 a.m., Gregory was pronounced dead. In the end, the surgery had been successful in repairing the heart defect, but the cause of his death was a case of pneumonia. Over the next 15 months, Lily High operated on 45 more patients with similar defects using this technique. Most patients receiving the surgery were younger than two years old. The success rate of these surgeries was about 71% to the patients. However, cross-circulation was also a risk to the oxygenator. With this, he also discovered that heart block transpired after corrective heart surgery to about 10% of the patients. Because of this, Lily High and Dr. Richard DeWall, an associate of his, devised a preferred method using a bubble oxygenator and two years later, with Earl Bakken, invented the first transistorized wearable permanent cardiac pacemaker for clinical use. The pacemaker was battery powered, which made you more mobile than the prior pacemaker that had to be plugged into the wall and could fail during power blackouts. By 1960, Medtronic, which was associated with Dr. Lilyhigh, introduced the first implantable pacemaker. This cardiac device evolved into the modern pacemaker used today. It also won Dr. Lilyhigh the 1955 Albert Lasker Award in Medical Research. His unexpected idea of cross-circulation and other inventions saved the lives of many people struggling with heart defects. Also, he reassured other doctors and research teams that performing these surgeries was difficult yet possible. These ideas encouraged and inspired surgeons to try new techniques while operating and to invent new devices to save lives. The pacemaker inspired such devices and treatments as radio frequency therapies, mechanical devices, drug and biologic delivery devices, and diagnostic tools. Between 1951 and 1979, Dr. Lilyhigh trained 154 cardiothoracic surgeons at the University of Minnesota Hospital and the New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center. 23 of these 154 students became program directors of cardiothoracic programs and in turn trained 477 additional surgeons. A total of at least 820 cardiothoracic surgeons around the world can trace their background back to Dr. Lilyhigh. A number of significant research contributions have been forthcoming from these trainees during the past 35 years. Today there is a heart institute at the University of Minnesota and a museum dedicated to him. The institute's purpose is to find a clear plan of action to cure heart disease. They do this by employing research teams that come up with new treatments for cardiac diseases. The museum's purpose is to show people that heart defects that are fully treatable today used to be fatal. But now, thanks to the work of Dr. Lilyhigh, who produced medical devices that made supporting patients' blood circulation while being operated on possible, he caused many previously untreatable cardiac defects to be treatable. In 1973, he was forced to retire due to his declining eyesight. Lily High died July 5, 1999, in St. Paul, Minnesota, of prostate cancer at 80 years of age. With Dr. Lily High's leadership in producing and using cross circulation for the first time on March 26, he successfully repaired a cardiac defect more easily than ever before. He saved many people's lives that could have been lost and left a legacy that will never be forgotten. With Lily High's quick witted intelligence, he made inventions like the pacemaker that are often used today. He came to be known as the father of open heart surgery and has paved the way for open heart operations today.